Think about a newspaper, and then think about the business section. I promise this won't be painful. What do you picture? Probably picture some business magnate on the front page, and then around page four or five, you picture something like this, the stock tables. All these lists and columns of ticker symbols with all these numbers, this language that is nearly indecipherable, but that carries great import. What can we do with those tables? How can we make anything of them? Now, I don't know if back in the day, people actually used the newspaper to find new stock ideas by scanning the tables, or if they just used them as a way to track the prices of the stocks they already followed. In any case, we're not going to use these. Unfortunately, nobody reads newspapers anymore. But there is a modern way to filter out from these hundreds and thousands of stocks that are available to us as an investor to find the ones that are most interesting to us. To do that, we're going to talk about using stock screeners. A screener is a filter. In the airport, somebody who's screening luggage is letting the safe luggage pass through and catching anything that they think might be dangerous. A window screen is letting the air come in while filtering out the bugs, I hope. A screener on the stock market is something that filters out all the stocks you might not be interested in, so you can focus on the stocks you are interested in. You can find a screener in your brokerage account. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how I use my brokerage account if I wanna use a screener there. And a brokerage account is usually sufficient, the screener that it offers. It'll give you how big the company is, it'll give you how much money it's making, how fast it's growing, how the stock is performing, how much debt it has, and a bunch of other categories. It's usually sufficient. If you wanna go further, there are plenty of stock screeners available out there. You can Google a search for them. In the post I'm making for this video on shortinvestingguide.com, I link to a couple sites that have reviews of the best screeners on the web. I'll also link to the screener that I use the most outside of my brokerage. So you can have your options there. They will have a few more bells and whistles. They might open up to a few other markets. Again, your brokerage account is probably gonna be sufficient for where we start. I'm gonna use TD Ameritrade to walk us through how you can use a screener. Before I go into setting up a sample screen, let me show you just one thing that you'll see on most brokerage screeners is you'll see some predefined stock screens, preset lists. They're not the worst place to start if you're just browsing, but keep in mind all of these, whether it's some defined strong buys or whether it's more classical screens like 52 week highs or 52 week lows, those can be interesting, but they're common screens. You're not gonna get a different angle on the market. You're following either somebody else's opinion or a very popular way to look at the market. That's not wrong, but part of what we're trying to do is to get a fresh take as much as we can with a screen. So just keep that in mind in the future as you learn how to build screens and build ways to find stocks differently. Let's do a sample. So I'm going to walk through a screen. This is just a sample screen. The criteria doesn't exactly match how I would approach finding stocks, but it's a useful way to start just so you can see how this works. So we start on the create a screen page with no criteria selected. Let's add some criteria. First, let's say I want smaller companies. So I'm going to enter specific values and say that I want companies that are less than 25 billion. There's still 14,474 companies. So that's not doing a lot for me in terms of screening. But then let's say I want a company that's growing. And given the options here, let's say I want a company that's grown significantly for the past five years. So starting from before the pandemic, they've grown significantly. 966 companies that have grown at least 25% over that time that are less than 25 billion. Then I say, okay, I want a company that's not very expensive, but is profitable. So I go for a price to earnings ratio over the last 12 months that is zero to 20. So they have to be profitable because it's more than zero. It's a positive number and it's not a huge number. Again, we'll go over all of this in the future. These are all useful metrics and are going to be key to understanding stocks. But for now, let's just look at the screener. We're down to 215. That's workable. I'm gonna add one more 
I like to screen for companies that don't have a lot of debt. So let's say I'm going to screen for companies with zero to 25% debt to capital. That means they just don't have a lot of debt on their balance sheet. Let's see where all of this ends up. It's going to sort by market capitalization. So I'm going to go from biggest to smallest as the default. But as this loads, you'll see there's our list of companies. We've now pulled up almost 100 companies, but that's a lot less than 14,000 companies. That's our screen. This is the list that we're trying to get. Once we get to this list, what do we do? The point is not to say, all right, now I'm gonna go buy Futu Holdings and Car Gurus and Enterplus and so many other stocks. First of all, because this is a ton of stocks and you should never buy this many stocks, but also because the point of the screener is not to give you a buy, it's to give you stocks that may be interesting to research. So let's say you look at this and you look at one of the top names on the list and you say, oh, what is PagSeguro Digital? I'm saying digital because I know it's not a US company. You have right here, all you have is that it is $3.6 billion in market cap. It's grown 43%. Its price to earnings ratio is 10, if I'm reading this right. We can always export this to make sure I have this in the right line, but it's 10 to 11, not very much, and not a lot of debt. That's not enough to do anything with, except to start Googling the stock, find its investor relations page, all the stuff that we're gonna talk about as far as how to research a company in a future video. But that's where we can start with this. Let's go over some limits to screeners. One that you might be able to notice from the screen when I pull it back up. We have a company here that's 130 billion, even though I specifically screened to be under 25 billion. You'll have weird things like this happen. On Fidelity, I found enterprise values of negative 200 billion, which is not possible. Fidelity has some weirdness with how it's accounting for debt for financial firms, stuff like that. So you have to take the data with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's generally going to be good if it's coming from brokerage, but price to earnings ratio for this type of thing may not factor in one-time events. It may not be what's relevant to the market. There's a limit to how salient the data is. And so you have to do your own confirmation after the fact. The next issue is data relevance. A screener is built on backwards looking data. You're getting the last quarterly report or the last annual report inputted into the brokerage's system or whatever the screener's database is based on. And so you're gonna have data that's looking backwards from that point. That's valuable. You need to know the past to understand how a company has done in the past, how their management team has done and so on. But stocks move based on what's expected in the future. So a screener is not gonna capture that future element. Some screeners will have analyst estimates of the future, which is one way to get that, but even that isn't going to be perfect. So you have to keep in mind that screeners are looking backwards and the data may not be as useful to you. The last issue is related to that. Screeners are a static approach. You're taking a fixed lens on the world. You're by definition going to miss some things that might be interesting a company that's undergoing transformation, a company that has a hidden asset or has two divisions and you really care about one of them. They're all different ways to look at companies and a screener is not the most agile way to do so. It can still be useful for narrowing down your stock universe. It can still be useful from time to time for finding something different, but it's a static approach in a way that other more organic ways of looking for stocks isn't. So just keep that in mind. It's a real limit. It doesn't invalidate the value of screeners though. My dad told me a story once. He was from Kharkiv, Ukraine, and he went to college in Moscow. For him to stay in Moscow in the Soviet Union as a Jew from a different Soviet Republic, Ukraine, he needed a passport. To receive a passport, he needed to probably marry somebody who lived in Moscow. So his advice, I only look for women from Moscow. And in the end, my mother indeed was a Moscow native. It's a little bit of a silly example, but the principle of fishing in the right pond 
can translate to the stock market too. You want to fish in the right pond so that you save yourself time. If you're going to be fishing in the big sea where there's so many stocks available and you don't have no idea if you're going to get the fish you want, you may be out of luck. Whereas if you can narrow it down to a pond where you know that there's only rainbow trout that you really love to eat, then you have a better chance of finding one that's really going to bite and catch your interest. That's the principle of stock screener. It comes with limits. You're by definition not going to catch all the fish you might want to have. And it's lots of data issues that you need to make sure of. And it's only a starting point. But a good starting point in the market can be worth a lot. So the stock screener method is a good one to have in your toolbox. In my next couple videos, I'm going to talk about two more methods to finding stocks. So stay tuned for that. You can subscribe to this channel to get those videos when they come out. You can check out shortinvestingguide.com for more materials on screeners and this post. I'll have some screenshots from how to use a fidelity screener as more examples on screening. So watch out for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Best of luck with your fishing and see you next time.